Hey there, I'm Aramis and welcome back to another devlog for my little turn-based action roguelike chess survivors. In my last major patch, I added this cute little koala bear character, but the best part is I also created this boomerang ability which acts like a real boomerang. Now I thought this was a fun and kind of a perfect way to both create a unique ability based off of something from real life, but also a nice theme combo for our lovely friends down in Australia. Life has seemed extra busy recently. So I blocked this weekend off as a game dev weekend and my plan is to start working on my next major feature, Minions. Now I've wanted to add Minions to my game for quite a while, but the timing just hasn't felt right. And that's really because my current ability system is focused around throwing out projectiles and quite honestly, I haven't had to touch that code since I made it back during the demo phase of this game. So the first step I need to do here is reverse engineer what past Aramis did and then come up with a plan for what current Aramis is going to do to implement this. The first thing I realized is my ability code is hard to read at a glance. And this is because it originally grew organically as this system grew and matured. So I took some time to reorganize the code so it's a little easier to read. But at this point, I'm not sure how I want to handle minions. This code is already handling around 14 different types of projectiles and, well, minions will inherently act differently. So instead of just diving into programming, I took some time to design out the general structure for how I want minions to act. I'd like my minions to take up a tile space, meaning that they will interact with both the enemy and player movement patterns. I also want each minion type to have their own unique ability, and I'd like some of them to be targetable by enemy attacks, while still having others that just have a simple turn duration until they despawn. So instead of burning the midnight oil here, I'm going to let this one cook a little bit longer and I'll come back to this tomorrow morning. Saturday morning and what a nice little morning it has been. I got a quick workout in, grabbed some coffee and am now ready to sink my teeth into this feature. After thinking about it last night, I think the best step to take is to just simply get the minion to spawn in game and make sure that the enemies move around it. With Godot, this was easy enough by creating a new area 2D scene and then extending it with the unit class, which I already use for both my player and enemy scenes. Let's then give it some dev art because there's nothing better than a nice circle here. We'll make it blue and then we will go ahead and just tell the map to add it to a tile when the game starts. There we go. That wasn't too bad. Now let's see how the enemies interact with these minions by building a nice long horizontal wall of minions. Hmm, interesting. Now that's, no, that's not how I wanted it to work. Since I'm using Godot's A star 2D for pathfinding, I would expect that the rooks to move around the minion wall here but it seems that they're just moving back and forth and kind of getting stuck. All right, luckily I have some debug modes which I can use to see an enemy's intended path. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So it's planning on moving through the minions, but then when it actually tries to do the movement, its logic checks the tile and finds a unit there. So it halts its movement and can't go any further. All right, all right. So this seems to be a problem with my implementation of A star over in my map class. All right, checking back in here after quite a bit of time debugging this one. I was able to figure out that the root problem is I was making my A star connections between my tiles only if both adjacent tiles were not walls. So the fix ended up being to also now consider if there is a unit on any of those tiles. And then when a unit moves, it'll go ahead and update the A star classes so that it knows that those old tiles are now valid movement tiles. All right, now let's do a little bit of testing with that horizontal wall of minions again, and we can see that, oh, yep, indeed, the rook now moves around the minion wall correctly. Cool, now that we got enemy movement sorted out, let's give these minions a duration and hook that up to the global signal for when the player's ability phase starts. And if the duration is less than or equal to zero, we can call the die function from the parent unit class, which will do the proper cleanup steps. Now for the ability part, and we can do this by creating a placeholder do ability function, which gets called when the ability is off cooldown. I think a simple idea for my first minion is a spitball shooter, which will fit nicely with my more whimsical theme for my characters and abilities. I can easily make a new spitball class and then extend the minion class so we get all of those nice functions we previously created. To fire the projectile, we can implement the do ability function, which we add logic to to instance a new spitball projectile if it finds any enemies in the range of the collision shape here. Lastly, we actually need the spitball projectile scene, which we can pretty much just copy over from the pie show tiles projectiles. Let's make a few tweaks so that it has the correct flight pattern. And then let's see if it will compile fingers crossed. Right. All 
right? But now does it actually fire at an enemy? Huh? Hey, look, it, it worked. It worked on the first go. I gotta tell you, I've been programming for over a decade now and getting something to work on the first go is still such a satisfying feeling. Maybe that's because it rarely happens to me, but when it does, you gotta take a moment to appreciate it and, and pat yourself on the back. I think this is a pretty good stopping point for the day and I actually do have a few house chores to go work on, so I'll check back in tomorrow morning. While I was working on my house projects yesterday evening, I couldn't help but start to think about the artwork I wanted to do for my little spitball minion. So let's hop right into a sprite and make it. I like the idea of making this spitball minion kind of be a little turret that just stays stationary and then has a bendy straw as the cannon kind of Kind of how you would picture a spitball being shot out if you were a kid. Now let's go ahead and import this artwork into Godot. We can always change it later, but right now I just want to make sure that it works correctly. So we're going to update the do ability logic so that it plays the little spitball animation and angles itself toward the enemy, and then we'll fire the ball once that animation finished. Let's go ahead and test this out and, oh, <laughs> um, it's only supposed to shoot once per turn. Um, Yep, here we go. It looks like I was not actually checking which animation finished. So when it flipped back to the default animation, it just shot out a bunch of times. That's a quick fix. Here we go. Yeah, all right, all right. That looks a lot better, but on second thought, I really don't like this artwork. So let's flip back into A Sprite. I'm gonna refine it a little bit more. All right, yeah, that's it's a lot better. It looks a little bit cleaner, and this one actually looks like a straw this time, and that smaller footprint really does make it look a little bit cleaner. I wasn't able to fully finish this ability, but I'm pretty happy with the progress I made this weekend. Depending on when you're watching this video here, you should be able to go play with the Spitball Minion over on the Steam Beta Branch, or maybe even the main build of Chess Survivors. During early access, Chess Survivors is only $3, and I'd be thrilled if you checked it out and gave me some feedback. I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching.